So I'm gonna show you guys how to deploy Scala apps into AWS Lambda, and I'm gonna do it really fast. Um, uh, Greg's the expert when it comes to Lambda, but uh, I wanna show you what I've learned so far because I think a lot of people don't know a whole lot about it. So I'm gonna start just by explaining what it is. Um, AWS Lambda is an event-driven serverless computing platform provided by Amazon, so uh, blah, 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 you give them your code and they figure out how to run it somehow. Um, so what triggers that code? Uh, any of these things and a bunch of other things, the most interesting to me are the top two. Uh, the most interesting to, I think, Greg so far is the Echo one down at the bottom. Uh, I could be wrong, I'm speaking for him, but um, the, the top two I think are really interesting for CJ, especially the agitators. Um, and I'm gonna show you the very top one, the API gateway. Um, so just to, to restate the, what, what Lambda is, it's a little or a medium-sized chunk of code run upon certain events and then shuts off. You get paid in 100 millisecond increments, which is really nice. You don't get paid to have servers sitting running idle in, in the cloud. You only, get, you only get charged when your function is run. Wait, you mean I get paid to run Lambda functions? We get paid or we get charged? We get, sorry, we get charged <laughs> to run Lambda functions. Oh, man, I was well, so we excited. As in, we as in, in Amazon get, get paid. Uh, so they scale the application. You don't have to worry about JVM management or operating systems or Docker or Kubernetes or DevOps. Even though those things are fun, uh, they do kind of cost the company money for us to keep maintaining that, that, that configuration. So it's nice not to have to do that. Um, just uh, remember that there's no state. Uh, these things get, get turned on and turned off very rapidly. So you put your state in something more durable like uh, Kinesis, DynamoDB, Mongo, they have an RDS system, relational database, something, uh, and you can use Oracle, Postgres, MySQL, whatever. So there's lots of places to put state. Just you can't have singletons sitting around in memory. Um, people say, well, it's just a single function. There's not a whole lot you can do with that. And I challenge that opinion. First of all, main is just a single function. Really, when they say single function, they mean entry point. So main is a single function. If you look at how we use AppWorks, we're basically lighting up the entire member area just to do a job. Uh, I don't. They, there are limitations to how much the size of these things, and I think that the main jar file is too large. But we could do things similar to that in AWS Lambda. You could implement all of it, tracking internal API as a series of Lambda functions, for example. So uh, some disadvantages. Uh, there's a cold start lag if you haven't used your function in a while. It goes in, it goes into persistent storage and then has to start up when it, when the trigger gets hit. So. There's a two-second amount of it, at least the, the, the Hello World app that I'm going to show off. Only It takes about two seconds to start up from, uh, from cold. And then there's about 100 or so milliseconds hot start lag. So it stays running in memory for a little while before it gets shut down. So you have to deal with those. It's probably not so great for tracking where we need really fast, uh, really low latency responses. But uh, for APIs, maybe this is okay. I don't know. Depends on your use cases. But um, let me. I'm going to show you guys how to do the whole thing. I figured out how to do it in less than 10 minutes. So this is how you get started like really fast. So the first thing you want to do is connect your laptop uh, to the AWS cloud. So you log into AWS. I can get you access. Everyone on the floor, I can get access to this thing. Um, just ask me. And you log into this dashboard. And, uh, and from here, you click on the IAM uh, link. And then you go over to the users section right here. And uh, find yourself. So click on yourself. Uh, and. Uh, Click on security credentials, scroll down, get an access key. This is basically a username and password. Uh, and uh, copy and paste that and use that somewhere. Everybody write this down really quick. That's my password. <laughs> um, just kidding. I, I deleted it after I recorded this video. So write those two things down. That's basically your username and password. Um, and then you need to collect, connect your laptop to Amazon. So my favorite way to do this is to install this little utility in Brew, AWS CLI. And then you type AWS configure and you write down or you type in or copy and paste the, uh, the access key and, and secret access key. Those are the two things that uh, you just stole from me. Uh, followed by uh, the region and output format. Uh, the agitators use US West 1 as our region. Uh, you're free to use whatever region you want, but you should be consistent. Um, and the output format I use is JSON because it's kind of human readable and machine readable and uh, it's normal. Um, and then, uh, so let's make a project. We're gonna make a normal old Scala application using a Maven POM file. Um, there's two things that are special. The first one is that our packaging is going to use the Maven Shape plugin, because that's the one that Amazon wants us to use. So we use that, basically like a one jar, Uber jar. And so the phase is gonna be packaged, so we'll be able to type Maven package, and then this'll, this'll do the thing. Uh, and then we wanna have a dependency on Lambda. It's a very small library uh, that gives us access to like basically a single class that we're gonna use to inspect 
the input uh, from, from Lambda. Um, and then here's what the code looks like. It's pretty simple, it's just a hello world. Uh, so uh, you notice I'm importing something from Amazon and then something from com.cj. Uh, I'm going to show you that gateway response in a second. Uh, hold on to that though, but just remember our, our class name is demo, and then we have this function called my handler. That's the function that's going to get called. We're given this context by Amazon, and all we have to do is return this uh, this response object. And OK is a 201 or 200, and then some string. And there's an optional uh, optionally we can also give some headers. Um, the reason why we uh, so so what was up with that response thing? That's a little thing I wrote. It's a poorly documented feature of Amazon. This is the hardest part of all the whole the whole presentation is understanding this. And you don't have to because I wrote a library for it. Basically, Lambda uh, is triggered by lots of different things, and HTTP is not uh, is not implied uh, when you're using Lambda. So the concept of headers or a status code or a body is foreign in a lot of contexts. So when we're using HTTP, we have to return something that represents the entire HTTP response. And then inside of that response, there's a body. So we serialize the entire thing. All of this is a, a, a their Java objects or POJOs uh, or Java collections. Uh, and they use Jackson on the back end to uh, convert that stuff to uh, JSON. So uh, you guys don't have to use this, uh, but you're welcome to. I, I'm going to create a library and, and, and maybe maintain it because it's kind of cool. Um, anyway, now we're going to build. Uh, so we build Maven package and yay, build success. Uh, and then we create a Lambda function. So we're going to use that AWS utility to create a function. So you'll notice I named the function Scala Lambda Demo. In it. Uh, we set the runtime to Java 8. It supports T Sharp, Python, and uh, Node.js, uh, as well as a few others, I think. Um, and then a role that I created, I'm not going to get into roles in the presentation, but basically it's some security stuff. The name of that class, demo, and then the handler, the function. So this is a function reference. And then finally, uh, uh, the zip file that I just built. So this is the, that jar file that was uh, created using the Maven Shape plugin. Um, so uh, where are we at now? Uh, we got our laptop set up with AWS. We created a Maven project with the Shape plugin and the AWS Lambda dependency. We wrote some code. We created a Lambda function and uploaded it to AWS. So what's left? Uh, we have to uh, set up that trigger. I didn't do anything about HTTP yet. So we're going to create an API gateway trigger. So to do that, we're going to follow this code right here. <coughs> Uh, so I logged in, let me, let me back up. I logged in to the uh, AWS gateway again and went to Amazon API gateway. And I clicked on create API. And uh, I typed in the name of my API, demo API. Uh, and then inside of here, I can create as many resources as I want. So I'm going to create a resource. Um, and then I'm going to name that resource, I don't know, demo. Uh, so create that. Then I'm going to. Uh, create a method, and I'm going to make that get. So it's a get method. Okay. Uh, and then, hey, look, Lambda function, use the Lambda proxy gateway, US West 1, and then it auto-completes. That means it found my, my, my function. That's great. So I click OK. And then I all I have to do now is deploy my Lambda, or deploy my API, sorry. So let's deploy it. I'm going to deploy it straight out to production. There's no QA here. So fraud, production. There, I've deployed my API. So my API now exists. That URL is right there in blue, right here. That's the URL. And couple that with the that resource, and I have a useful URL, so I paste that in, slash demo, which is the resource, and boom. Now uh, that's the uh, the URL. So I, I've deployed some some uh, some Lambda code. So um, so just, just as a recap, the URL is right here. Uh, and the resources right here, and when you put the two together, you get this thing. So I'm going to put that up in my web browser. Uh, David says hello. So I'm going to do a quick. Uh, so wait, just before I do anything else, I just want to let you know all that pointing and clicking you can actually do from the command line. I just wanted to show you guys because it makes more sense visually if you look at the pointing and clicking. But all of that stuff can be scripted, or use, you can even use APIs if you don't even want to use the command line. Um, all right. So one last thing, and then I'll be done. Um, I'm going to show you guys live. Now that the environment is set up, I'm going to type something. Somebody say something uh, that. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. That was un unscripted. So I'm going to use um, Maven package. And, all right, that built. 
And then uh, I'm going to write, run this function. Actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to copy and paste it right out of the presentation. Paste. And so now my jar file has been uploaded. And so now I can go back over to that URL and refresh. And you can see that now it says, uh, hello, happy Friday. So that's the, that's the speed at which you can get code out into AWS. And remember, this was all written in Scala, so it's type safe and stuff. So anyway, that's, uh, that's everything. Any questions? Was well, this was unscripted, line also unscripted? But yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. Awesome. Thanks,